Alright, so I'm leaving my cabin on deck three. Throughout this entire deck are just crew cabins, mostly staff within the entertainment department. Uh, and this is below sea level, so that means no portholes. This is a fire screen door that are usually rated for about 60 minutes. They're pretty heavy, but can be closed manually or remotely from the bridge. This is Vladimir. He was the only lounge piano player on board. Don't remember where he's originally from, but he had Canadian citizenship. Did you say anything? <laughs> no, my English is not good. Uh, you, you talk to uh, me. You told me, yeah? yeah. <laughs> Hello, my name is Vladimir. I'm a piano player. It's the best because only me. Bye bye. Now, each stairwell is numbered. If I remember correctly, the four represents which of the seven watertight compartments you're in, and the three represents how many decks it contains. So one to two, two to three, and three to four. We're on deck three now, and there's only one more deck left for this staircase. This can be a lifesaver when navigating an emergency. See, we can't ascend any further on this particular staircase. On the right are the luggage trolleys. They're tied up all throughout this deck. This is a watertight door used in containing water and it helps balance out the ship in case of flooding. Also for containing smoke, it can be controlled manually or from the bridge. This long stretch is referred to as I-95, being that most crew are non-U.S. citizens. They need an I-95 document in addition to their passports. Lots of crew meet up here because it's the easiest to find. On the left is access to most officer cabins, and on the right are personnel, office, medical center, and other administrative offices. This is a training notification board. You check here every day hoping your name is not on the list because then it means they schedule you for corporate safety or some kind of security training. And 90% of the time it was on a port day and you couldn't leave the ship. All right, so at this point, we're gonna be going upstairs and I do apologize for the video. It's gonna seem a little forced. Uh, that was because at this time I was kind of uh, I was running out a little late for work. This is going to be the crew bar and I had to slow this video down. I rushed through this so fast that it got really shaky. So here we are in the crew bar and uh, as you can see you got like a foosball table in there. You got a nice little lounge area, couches and stuff to watch some TV. Uh, you'll see all the way in the back you see uh, where you can get where the bar is, where you can get your drinks and stuff. There's some high tables and high stools. And stuff. Uh, that glassed in area is the smoking lounge, and that was pretty much just a gas chamber on board. The rest of this is, you know, there's more benches and tables and places to sit. Uh, all the way in the back was a, a DJ booth, and there's a dance floor and stuff there. Pretty cool, simple little place, but uh, there was only one bar on the ship. Uh, here's the crew mess. This was places where you can actually sit. This was one of the bigger places where you can actually eat. Uh, on both sides, there would be food, and it mainly catered towards the uh, Indian and Filipino cultures. Uh, on the sides you have uh, juices, coffees, milks, so you had a soda machine in the back. You also got a cruise shop there, but you had to pay for both. This is an area here where we had to separate all the garbage. Uh, more places to sit, and yes, that is a pool table on a cruise ship. It is a much fun and very interesting way to play a game of pool. Over here is the internet cafe. You didn't have a computer, but you had to pay for internet, so that was kind of a bummer. Um, more nice couches to sit and lounge around. Uh, they also have like video games and stuff like that that you can play for free. 
Uh, yeah, it is a maze in this place, but you'll be surprised with yourself in about four or five days. You pretty much know the ship like the back of your hand. Now we're heading towards the staff mess. Uh, they catered more towards westernized cultures, the United States, uh, England, Canada, Australia. It was a little bit nicer place to eat, a little bit smaller. Some of the ships actually had this area where it was carpet. Uh, now we're going back downstairs and this door will take us right back out onto I-95. This was the dreaded crew laundry mat. We had two very small rooms like this on board. Each room had about 10 washers, 10 dryers. Half of them were broken on a daily basis. You had about anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 crew members. So do the math about how fun it was to do laundry on board. This is the tiny crew gym on board. Yes, that is my finger. Yes, they put a ping pong table in there as well, which is really annoying. So while it's nothing special, at least you could still get a simple little workout in. 